Uh, welcome uh, to Anne Weinberg and Felipe Ignacio Noriego, also known as OVS, for their performance. Thank you. Um, hello. Yeah. Uh, well, welcome. Thanks for coming this morning. Uh, we are OFFS. We made this duo when we met at the conservatory, maybe five years ago, six years ago. And since then, we've been playing together. My instrument is the laptop, and her instrument is piano. So what we want to do in this presentation is show you a bit of what we do when we play together, which is live coding. Maybe some of you have heard about it, um, which I mean, what we want to do is that you follow the process of coding while I'm doing it. And later we'll show you where, where are we taking this project, because we want to make it ultimately that Anne herself can code with a piano. So we'll get, we'll get into that in a bit. Yeah, so um, we're musicians originally, and uh, as musicians we play a lot of chamber music. And when you're playing with uh, a laptop artist or a live coder, they're very much entranced in their thoughts. So as a chamber music partner to that, I found it very frustrating because I never had any visual contact or physical contact. It was very distant. So we came up with this experiment, which was the idea that every set amount of time we had to make visual contact to make it a more normal musical experience. So if you guys log into this address, the, HT, the Shaz, um, what you can do there is actually control the time interval at which we have to look at each other. Now, it's limited between 30 and 120 seconds. Um, and what happens is at that moment when it flashes, then if we want to make any big musical changes, like you would do when you would start something fresh together or something in conventional chamber music, you can only do it at that moment. So we see the signal, we look at each other, and then we can, we can or we cannot change something. That's up to us. You're also very welcome to leave comments. Um, you can, of course, try and hack the system. Please don't, uh, but you can. Uh, this is a hacking conference, after all. Mm. Um, and leave comments and tell us if you want something. And we may or may not respond to it, uh, depending on what we feel like. But uh, normally, we respond to some of the comments, not all, because there's a lot of you and only two of us. But we will try. We will try. And um, we try to make something a nice performative musical experience out of this for you. A collective experience. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, without any further ado, if you guys log in, say hi. Oh, yeah, I see. OK. And okay. we'll have time for questions after the, the piece. Yeah. Thank you. 
Um, thanks for the spooky experience. It was cool, cool to do, and uh, cool the whoever did the alert there and uh, kind of uh, crashed the, the the messages. Yeah. Uh, so now we're gonna go to the next thing we did. I can explain about it, and I'll add up if you miss yeah. anything. I'm yeah. going I'm to explain it. Felipe, Felipe. Oh, can you fix my screen? My screen. Um, so. We kind of, uh, this is a big research project for me, how can we play together between the live coding and the piano? It's not really normal, a uh, normal way to make music. Um, so then we were really sitting, and what can we really do to bring the two practices closer together? And then we came up with this idea of the code clavier, and we have some stickers uh, after if you want one. And the code clavier is basically a system, and that's why we also have a digital piano, where I will live code through playing the piano. Now, we started this project in April, so we're really excited to be able to share it with you guys. It's still m very much in the uh, developing phase. Um, we're going to share the first prototype, which is called Hello World. Uh, I think you guys can all relate to that. And um, it's, uh, it's very nice, uh, but it's still very much kind of using the, this keyboard as a substitute for your standard laptop keyboard. So making music is, well, I think it's, it's, it is some form of making music, but it's not comfortable piano playing music. Um, but it's a, still a very an important step for us to have the first kind of, hey, I can live code through playing the piano. And we're really curious uh, what you guys will think about it too. Thanks. OK. OK. It's booting? It's booting. <laughs> mm -hmm. The thing is that since we started this journey, um, we tried to do it like in phases. So the first experiment we did was to just like let Anne play the piano and see if we could just map her MIDI keys to then be translated into code commands in Super Collider, which is the language we use for audio. And um, if once these boots, we'll show you. And then what we wanted to do after that is then not just like one-to-one -one mapping, which was kind of boring actually, but see if we could get the system to recognize the the musical gestures of the piano and also map that to certain things in the language. Yeah. And we also, whilst we're booting, want to thank the Stimulierungsfonds in the Netherlands for supporting this project. Um, that's been really great support for us. 
And uh, we're also really open with the future to collaborate with people that want to develop other forms of code output. So not necessarily music related, but visuals or virtual reality or what you name it, uh, we're kind of thinking about it. So if you're interested, come and have a chat with us after. Supercollider takes a while to boot. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's there now. And for this also, we use then, um, as I said, JavaScript for the mapping and the MIDI, let's say the MIDI part, which gets the, the piano and makes the mapping. And then for Supercollider, just to do the audio synthesis. Uh, so I have to boot the, the cold caveat, which is there. OK. It's also quite a journey for me to learn how to code. So um, we also will be looking into making an education platform because it's an interesting way to approach coding through music as opposed to... Um, yeah, that's kind of one of the dreams also. Yeah. And just so that I give a little intro of this, with this one, so that she could control a, a robot toy piano, that's how they called it, which yeah. is a mechanical toy piano with MIDI. So in theory, she's playing and controlling a, a mechanical instrument, but because we don't have that instrument here, she's going to be controlling a, a sampler. It's also done in Super Collider, so... Take it on.
I get the applause, but actually Felipe made the whole system, so I think uh, 
very excited to make it so user-friendly. But uh, as you saw, I was kind of more or less typing, uh, just using a different interface and trying to intersperse it with musical things in between, but uh, getting a bit nervous and... Uh, what? <laughs> oh, sure. Um, so our next prototype is called Mo Tippets. And the key difference about it is that instead of using individual key control, um, I get motives that I play, pianistic motives and pianistic gestures that I recognize with a computer and then mapped uh, to code snippets, which I can then control. Uh, for now, my main mode of control is um, getting the variables through the intervals of uh, the tremolos. So uh, if I will play a 12, an octave, that's 12 semitones, so the number will be 12. Uh, and um, it's very much a prototype. Uh, I'm always never quite sure if it's going to work, so, but we thought it would be really exciting to share it with you guys here today. Um, and that's the last thing we're going to play, and uh, then we'll really hope to get a few questions in before the time yeah. is up. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, after this, Anne will not need me at all, actually. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you. So that was a nice stop with the rain, I thought. Yeah. Um, so hopefully what you could notice here is that uh, the way Anne is generating the code is a bit more musical than the first one, which is what we're trying to achieve in the end. And also, we, d we call it motipets. I don't know if you said it, but because we are recognizing the motifs and mapping it to snippets. Yeah. And what's like, really exciting about being able to code with the piano eventually is that I have two hands, so I can code two things parallel. It's uh, still working in progress in terms of this system, but that is kind of one of the big motivations behind it. And I think something really unique we can bring to the coding paradigm. And uh, we have time for a few questions. So uh, please ask or come talk to us. So who has a question for Felipe and Anne and wants to come up to the microphone? Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, thank you so much for the wonderful performance. Thank you. Um, my question is, what would be the minimal requirements for a performer before he or she could um, start to play with this? So do you need to first learn how to code as well? Do you first need to set up the entire snippet system? Or can you just plug this in and play? <laughs> it's a very big question. Um, at this stage, uh, you cannot plug anything in because it's not released. But eventually, we, will have, um, we also want to develop an education model where um, people of various levels of programming and musical skills could interact with the system. So uh, I don't know, for those of you based in the Netherlands, in, um, on 16th of September, we will do an installation type also at the Leiden Nacht von Kunst und Kennis, where um, non-musicians uh, can have a go and control the system in a very primitive way. I didn't know how to code until, I mean, I still don't know how to code. Uh, I learned everything about coding through the system, and I think it was a very nice way, certainly for musicians, to uh, approach coding. Because you learn it as a nonlinear score, in a way, although not exactly, because there are too many variables. But it's much more approachable than if I had to just learn this with the computer. Let me add up also. So um, like what's happening now with the system is that many things are sort of pre-built, let's say uh, many keywords and conditionals. But what we want is that you don't need to really know how to code. You know how to play the piano. So with enough feedback, visual feedback, what we want is that you, you start understanding certain things of programming. For example, the way she stopped it, um, she mapped a conditional which, which says, OK, for the next uh, time, I will be checking how many notes you play in uh, blocks of five seconds. And if it's more than 100, I will stop it. So you know, trying to do those things that relate to the playing in real time, we think that could also give understanding to the performer or the player how to program and then use those constructs. And then eventually, we want to go more lower level, of course, and where they can even make their own snippets and even, even type their conditionals or make their own conditionals. So we're, we're trying to go really to the low level in the end, I think. Yes, next question. Hi, thank you for your performance. Um, I'm just thinking, because there's a limited number of keys on the piano and a limited, uh, well, finite number of commands, um, what's the chance, let's just say, perhaps playing something classical that you'll create even one valid command, or is this really just a case of monkeys and typewriters? You know? um, I think in the final version, there will certainly be a chance of that. Cause, uh, but it's... It's not the goal to play a Chopin nocturne and suddenly code, because we do want the, the pianist to engage in the coding process. So that we can always render code, but it should be also meaningful and controlled, ideally. Although m one of the dreams we have also is try to see with this system what happens if you code intuitively. Like, you're not thinking in the logical process when you program as a programmer, but you're just playing music or playing a prelude by Chopin or improvising, and see if that generates code. And probably it will not be useful code, but like the experience itself might be useful, or we don't know. We want to explore those things. Those are part of our questions, actually. Yeah. Again, um, four. So, four. Uh, <laughs> what, what what software are you using for this? Is it any related, related to like Sonic Pi or what libraries or tools? No. Or uh, you yeah, use? we're using uh, JavaScript to get the MIDI to the computer, and then also analyzing the MIDI and categorizing the input and branching it into different sort of analysis branches to, to then um, generate what I want to type code. 
let's say, that's JavaScript, uh, and that's what's here in the terminal. And then that's sending uh, through another library that just types. Actually, it just makes it a keyword, let's say. I'm using Super Collider, which is the other part there, which is a it's open source language uh, for audio synthesis and analysis. Actually, Sonic Pi is built on top of Super Collider. Uh, so that's it, JavaScript and Super Collider. Next question. Yeah, hi. Uh, first of all, thank you for the awesome performance. It was absolutely suitable for Sunday morning. <laughs> so um, besides all the technology, I mean, you do want to repeat this process on stage, right? Yeah. So how can I book you for my festival? You can come talk to us right now. <laughs> Put up your information on the screen, because I'm sure more people would want to do that. I, I will come to you afterwards. Yeah, we have a website. It's called uh, keyboardsunite.com. We can't, I can't say that we really keep it up to date. Um, we will right now. Uh, we'll update it <laughs> today. Let's see more of you in the Netherlands. Awesome. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. And please come talk to us. Uh, yeah, next, next question. <coughs> yeah, I really enjoyed it as well. Uh, I have a little technical question. Yes. Um, how do you uh, recognize the motives? So what aspects of the music uh, that, that she is playing are, are you looking at? So is it pitch or tempo or yeah. both? Yeah, good question. We, we had a lot of discussion in the beginning for that. And in the end, it's MIDI. <laughs> We're just looking at MIDI because we thought that the protocol is like very well defined. And it's not like a lot of information. So we're just looking at uh, which note it is, a MIDI number, and how often it's, it's coming in. And then uh, I'm storing those things in patterns. So I'm getting the strings, sorry, in arrays. And then I'm analyzing those arrays. And uh, for this one, because this is also kind of a prototype, we ha I hard-coded the motives. So I'm comparing sort of what's coming in to something that's hard-coded. And if it's a match, then it prints a snippet. Eventually, what, uh, what we want is that for the next phase or the next prototype, the, instead of having hard-coded motives to compare, the system will learn like kind of her style, or if you play Chopin, it learns the style of Chopin, and derives those patterns, and then compares what you're playing to those patterns and tries to see if there are matches or not. Does that answer the question? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Uh, and one more uh, related question. Um, do you calculate the tempo that she's playing live and then uh, use that parameter to uh, play the motive uh, in sync? When we play together, you mean? Uh, no, this uh, one. This yeah, last yeah, one. yeah. When you trigger the motive. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. actually it, not. Does it have a fixed tempo or is it adaptive? It, it's it's fixed. a fixed tempo, and she can modify it. Yeah, okay, I was controlling it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But it, she uses her ears to synchronize it. Yeah. Let's say so. She shoots it. Oh, it's not there. Modify it. Is it there? Or I play on time. But it's a good idea. I think. W I mean, right now, we we have very basic sort of listening methods. But I think analyzing the tempo and the frequency of notes is a good one to to have more information to do more things with the system for sure. Thank you. Thanks for the suggestion. Thanks. Yeah. So unfortunately, time's up. Um, so uh, give a warm applause for Anne and Felipe, a better known as Offs. Well. Mm -hmm.